In this video, we're gonna be looking at an overview of period two of AP US history, which means we're gonna be looking at the different characteristics of European settlements and how those settlements interacted with the native population. While all Europeans settled in the Western Hemisphere for economic reasons, based on the idea of mercantilism, varying geographic and colonization philosophies led to differences in settlements as well as differences in how they interacted with native populations. Even the British colonies along the eastern coast developed different social, economic, and political systems. So let's look at the colonies of the Spanish, the English, the French, and the Dutch. But before we look at the differences, let me tell you one thing they all had in common. They were all a very far distance away from the mother country, which means just based on sheer logistics of communication, each of the European colonies would develop into its own distinct entity. Now, each of the four European powers had a different philosophy of colonization. For example, the Spanish and the English wanted to extract value from their colonies, either through agriculture or through mining. The extractive nature of this philosophy required significant encroachment of the Spanish or English on native populations. And this encroachment resulted in either the subjugation of the native populations into forced labor, or their outright extermination. While European diseases did decimate these native populations, the Spanish harnessed the use of forced labor by these native populations to a much greater degree than the English did. The French and the Dutch, on the other hand, largely depended on cultivating working relationships with the native populations to establish trade routes. The establishment of these commercial trade networks led to the French and the Dutch being able to extract value and wealth from their colonies without establishing a significant European presence and without encroaching upon native populations. The native populations were very active during European colonization. And when I say active, what I mean is that they fought for their own interests in the face of European displacement and European diseases. Native populations battled European powers to secure their own position, but they also allied themselves with European powers to reduce the position of rival tribes. And within the British North American colonies, American Indian resistance was significantly reduced due to disease and preemptive strikes. Although as the British colonists expanded and continued to encroach on native populations, the conflicts would continue. Significant differences existed not only between different European settlements, but within the settlements of a single European power. As an example, look at the British North American colonies and the distinct differences that would emerge in the New England colonies, the Middle colonies, the Chesapeake Bay, and the Southern colonies. Now, differences would arise based on the geography of the region, as well as the demographics which would settle in the population. In the New England and Middle colonies, the propensity of settlers to concentrate in townships, the availability of good natural harbors, and the collateral industries resulting from the fishing trade led to a diversified economy. Now, the, this diversified economic model would contrast sharply with the one-crop economic model of the Chesapeake and Southern colonies. The result of a diversified economy was a more equitable distribution of income and a substantial middle class, both of which the Southern colonies lacked. Now, the propensity of Northern colonies to be settled by religious communal groups along with a geographic limited area of which to settle, led to higher urban populations, which increased and encouraged trade and commerce, leading to a more stable economy than in the southern colonies. The large accumulation of agricultural lands into the ownership of the few, referred to as the southern aristocracy, led to a less equitable distribution of income and an almost non-existent middle class. Additionally, the one-crop economies of the South and Chesapeake Bay led to a much more turbulent economic model because it was dependent upon the success year to year of that single crop. Now, differences in the economies also led to a differences in labor needs. Now, neither the Northern, Middle, Chesapeake, or Southern colonies were successful in subjugating the native populations into forced labor. So each area developed a labor system which suited its economic needs. The northern colonies relied on family and hired hands to fulfill their labor demands, whereas the southern colonies relied on African slave labor to fulfill their agricultural labor demands. Now, English colonization followed the beliefs of mercantilism in that the colonies existed for the good and the benefit of the mother country, most notably in the creation of a favorable balance of trade. Because of this, Britain established certain trade regulations, such as the Trade and Navigation Acts, which generally benefit both the colonies 
and Britain. However, the absence of strict enforcement of these trade regulations by Britain due to salutary neglect led the colonies to develop a sense of economic independence, and they began to follow the trade regulations when it suited their interest and completely ignore the trade regulations when it went contrary to their interest. Additionally, the geographic distance that I talked about in the beginning of the video between the colonies and Britain would have a significant impact on the political institutions established in the colonies. To aid political efficiency, the colonies established self-governing institutions which quickly became legitimate and revered. Periodically, Great Britain would attempt to reign in control of the colonies, either by diminishing the political impact of the self-governing institutions or by attempting to enforce the trade regulations, neither of which was successful and it only led to a weakening of the bond between the colonies and Great Britain. However, the policy of salutary neglect by Britain would allow for a foundation of peace between the colonies and Britain. Ultimately, European colonization in the Western Hemisphere varied for three reasons. The philosophy of colonization, the geographic area in which the colony was established, and the demographic which would settle within that colony. As a result, European powers interacted with native populations in significantly different ways. But all that interaction was predicated on how the European power can extract the most wealth from the region. And underneath all this economic development was the fundamental flaw of mercantilism, because mercantilism demands that above all, the interests of the mother country are placed above the interests of the colonies. For an independent, economically vibrant, and educated population like that in the British North American colonies being regulated to a second-class citizen just because you lived in a colony was simply not tolerable. The salutary neglect of Britain towards the colonies allowed for a peace to exist between the two. But at the end of the French and Indian War, Britain would end this salutary neglect and the peace between the colonies and Britain would eventually cease.